I am Mansoor Karam, and I am VP products at uh, Juniper, uh, running the Appstra effort. Prior to Juniper, I was at uh, Appstra, co-founder and uh, CEO. Um, so, but before getting into, into all of this, uh, I assume that contrary to us, you don't spend, you know, you don't wake up every morning thinking and breathing Appstra. <laughs> so, uh, what I'll do is uh, just uh, remind you what Appstra is, what we're all about, why we created Appstra in the first place. Uh, so that was back in 2014. It was myself and David uh, Sheraton from Arista and uh, uh, Sasha Retkovich, uh, who was actually distinguished engineer at Juniper. And the, the, what we've uh, realized at the time, and it's something that I think is uncontroversial today, is that networks you know, were becoming more and more critical. You know, you've all heard of this thing called digital transformation. Well, it's happening, obviously. And with the pandemic, it just accelerated. And at the core of that is the network. If you want to be su successful at digitally transforming, you need to transform your network. And you know, for that, you need the right tools. And it was clear to us that the network operators didn't have those right tools for them to get the job done. Um, a lot of times we've, we've heard of these outages. You know, essentially, these guys have to move really fast, uh, deliver for the business, while networks not only are getting more critical, but they're increasing in size and then they're becoming even more and more complex. And so, you know, in an effort to deliver, they try to go fast and ultimately shoot themselves in the foot, you know, creating these outages that can cause millions and millions of uh, dollars of, that cost millions and millions of dollars. And so what we set ourselves to do is to deliver tools that would help them go fast at the speed of the business, yet do it reliably. Uh, you know, we wanted to really advance the game when it comes to delivering a reliable experience. You know, it reminds me of uh, this ad, I think it was Pirelli from the 80s, power is nothing without control. It applies to tires, certainly applies to networks. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, choice, lock-in. Um, you know, sometimes I wonder, why did we spend decades working on standards? standards like BGP and OSPF and VLAN, VXLAN, if at the end, we're gonna throw it all away by bringing in a management solution that locks you in into one vendor. It doesn't matter that your switch runs BGP. If you're using a, a management solution that only works with that vendor, you're not gonna be able to swap that switch with another switch that runs BGP. You're locked in. And so network operators, have told us this and they've, they're irked by it. And what we wanted to do is deliver a management solution that from the ground up was designed to be multi-vendor, uh, works across all of the established vendors and open solutions. So that's the second pain point that we set ourselves to, to, to solve. And the third was scalability. How many of you have seen a demo of a, some cool solution for networking that works well with five switches, maybe 20. But then if you ask the vendor to show you how it works for a hundred or a thousand switches, either it doesn't work at all, or if it works, it's, you know, it's a completely different experience. And so for us at the end, we need to solve the problem at scale. You know, we want to address the needs of the largest data centers on the planet. We want to grow with our customers as they grow their businesses. And so scalability is critical to any management, network management solution. And we wanted to build a solution that had scalability top of mind from the ground up. And so that's us, Appstra. That is, these are the pain points that we were going, uh, that we set ourselves to solve. And so what we came up with is intent-based networking. You may have heard of that. If you've heard of that, we're here responsible for it. Uh, we started it, then Garner talked about it, then all of our competitors started talking about it. Essentially, intent-based networking, what it means at its core is that instead of network operators being involved in the how by fiddling with T CLI on device by device, they describe the, the what, what is the desired outcome for, from, from them building and deploying a network. What are the, what are, the, what is their intent, you know, in terms of connectivity, layer two, layer three, security, uh, security posture, quality of experience, the network describe the network operator describes what they want, 
and then the software is responsible not only to push the configurations to all of devices to make it happen, but also to automatically, and that is critical, collect the telemetry from all of those devices and run the tests independently to ensure that indeed your network is delivering on your intent. So that's the core concept behind intent-based networking. And you're not doing it just once, you're doing it day zero, day one to day two plus, not the f only the first time you're designing your network, but every time you have a change that you want to make in your network. Every time you, you need to make a change, you have to design it, you have to build it, deploy it, and, that, and then assure that indeed the change delivered on the outcome that you were seeking in the first place. So it's a full life management, loops life cycle management solution. And at the core of intent-based networking is this concept of a single source of truth, a repository of all of the state, both collected from the network and your intended, your, your intent that we're marrying in this distributed data store, not just now, but uh, across, every, across the entire history. For every change that you make, we keep a snapshot of that. And so you have the ability to go back and forth and audit every change that was made and even deliver cool functionalities such as Time Voyager, whereby you can decide, you know, although some network operator on your team has made five changes, you don't like them, you decide to go back to the network it was last Tuesday by click of a button. That's the power of intent-based networking. And so since we first uh, announced our first customer, I believe that was in 2017, was Yahoo Japan. Well, we've uh, deployed across many, many more customers. We're happy to report we are now uh, uh, deployed in 40 plus countries. Uh, in many verticals, you can see here, you know, we have service providers such as T-Systems and Vodafone. We have cloud providers such as Advania. We have banks such as First Bank and Rafizan Bank. And, you know, people have told us how much of a difference the product has made both to the network operators' lives and to their business. You know, to me, like the best uh, quotes are ones we get when uh, customers actually call us to tell us how they thank us because they were able to go back home on Friday after making a big change in the network, they had reserved the weekend. They thought they were gonna stay there the entire weekend, missing their you know, kids' birthdays or their you know, wedding anniversaries, yet they were able to finish much earlier than they expected because of the power of this solution. For us, this is all really meaningful. You know, one other quote that I really like is that first one from Worldwide Technology. In my 20 plus years in networking, I have seen few products this exciting. I am genuinely blown away by Appstra, how it works and goes well beyond anything I ever imagined. You know, us being in products, it, it doesn't get better than this. So let's talk a bit about the Appstra evolution. In order to deliver this turnkey experience, you know, this, this reliability that we've talked about, we, we, we took uh, a page out of the hyperscalers uh, playbook. What they told us is, what they taught us is that in order to deliver on a reliable experience, you have to keep it constrained. You have to impose some constraints. And indeed, the hyperscalers were as constrained and as can be, you know, unapologetically. They deployed leaf spine networks with BGP. That's it, right? <laughs> Uniformity consistency across the board. And by doing that, they were able to deliver reliability never seen before. So that's, you know, kind of was the initial concept. And in fact, back in 2016, when we delivered Abstra 1.0, it essentially supported leaf spine networks, three stage and BGP. That's it. <laughs> and in fact, that's what Yahoo Japan deployed over 10, 20, hundred and thousands of, of racks ultimately over multiple continents. Uh, but then obviously we're going after the enterprise market and therefore, you know, we couldn't just keep at that. We had to, the enterprise market has different requirements than the hyperscalers and we had to expand to support their requirements. And so we had to stretch the boundary. We had to deliver that reliability, that turnkey experience while making the product more versatile by adding more topologies 
to our supported topologies and by adding more protocols. And so that kind of has been our evolution. We started with three stage class, we added five stage, we, add, we added MLAC topologies, uh, data center interconnect, ultimately, you know, this year collapsed fabric to support not only centralized data centers, but also distributors, dis distributed data centers and also address some campus use cases. And in terms of protocols, we started with GP, and then we continued on to support VLANs, VRFs, EVP and VXLAN, security policies with access lists. And then we, you know, we uh, delivered this, this concept of configlets whereby the network operator can customize the configs to their needs and ultimately connectivity templates, which really added a lot of versatility to how we define the environment in which the network is operating, you know, defining things like external routers and firewalls, et cetera. So we've really expanded the use cases that we could support, really pushing the boundaries. Uh, and, by, and we did that by modeling all of those protocols, all of our topologies within the, the, the use cases, the reference designs, we call them, that we support so that we can deliver on this intent-based networking approach across all of those use cases. And indeed, you know, if you look at our customers, we support data center use cases. We're deployed in data center use cases, in private cloud use cases, machine learning clusters, uh, in some campus networks, uh, such as uh, Bloomberg in London. And we're increasingly relevant in what is the new cable, which is the distributed access architecture and 5G topologies. Ultimately, these are all fabrics. And if you have a fabric, you can automate it with Appstrom. And so that has been our evolution thus far. And again, customer feedback has been, wow, this is great. Having said that, what our customers also told us is, you know what, this is awesome stuff. You guys have great capabilities with your solutions. You have great capab capabilities, but the way you've packaged it and, and because of those some of these constraints, it's kind of like an all or nothing proposition. Either we fit and therefore we can take advantage of all of those capabilities that you have, or if we don't, then we can't take advantage of any of it. Wouldn't it be nice if instead of having this all or nothing proposition, can we individualize the capabilities that we want to take advantage of, piecemeal it, so that if we want to take advantage of just this time voyager capability, for example, whether or not it's a three spine, three, three, three stage class or not, can we, can't we not, can't we not take advantage of that capability or, you know, ensuring, assuring you my cabling, which is another really popular feature or upgrading images. If I want to upgrade images uh, with, with Appstra, we know we're going to get a completely reliable experience. Can we use Appstra just as an upgrade machine, right? So that is the feedback we got from our customers. And, and it's, it kind of, I don't know, pains me a bit to say this in 2022, when we started in 2014, we thought that by 2016, maybe by 2017, for people would forget the CLI. <laughs> well, <laughs> it didn't happen. Exactly. From our cold dead fingers. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, it didn't happen. People tell us they are still attached to their CLIs, right? <laughs> hmm? Yes. So. Um, and, and they understand that ultimately in order to deliver on the full experience, they need to get away from that. But they want us, they want us to kind of like hold their hands along the journey and still peek at that CLI. And so, you know, these are the type of feedbacks we got from our customers that we really thought about and took to heart. And in fact, I mean, this is valid because if you, talk, if you think of Appstra, Yes, we, our solution is very versatile and we support lots of different use cases. But again, we had to bring in those constraints in order to deliver on this turnkey experience that we set ourselves to, uh, to deliver uh, from, day, from day zero. But our customers were telling us, can't you do that? You know, can't you just you know, go a full versatility? Can't we just use all of the capabilities that we want without any of the constraints, even if we, you have to, uh, compromise a bit on the turnkey aspect of the solution. And, you know, in a sense, what our network engineers were telling us is that they want to get to the promised land, to the fully automated infrastructure. They want to get to, the, to, to, to deploy ultimately this turnkey solution, but they wanted to do it on their own terms. 
can't I start with my leaf spine or maybe in my backbone? Because this is where I have an opportunity to start. Can't I start just by automating all my upgrades first? Can't I just take advantage of this really cool audit capability and along with time voyager so that I can audit every change and go back to wherever I want to in the past without necessarily abiding by your reference designs. So these are the things our network engineers were asking for. And you know, essentially, this is really valid feedback that we took to heart and that we wanted to deliver a solution for. If you look at it versus the competition, Appstra was always the most turnkey solution. And while it was versatile, it had its constraints. Other vendor solutions didn't have the same type of constraints, yet they were constrained, of course, because they only work with a single vendor. With Appstra, from the get-go, you supported multiple vendors. And scripting tools are, of course, always going to be the most versatile, uh, but they're a very, very sharp knife. And if you don't know what you can do, what you're doing, you can really hurt yourself. And so what we set ourselves to do is to deliver on this having the ability to stretch, to essentially deliver on the entire range, all the way from the most turnkey solution, if that's what you want, or the most versatile solution, if indeed this is what you want. And so that is the problem. This is the challenge our customers gave us. And I'm gonna hand it over here to DJ, who will tell us how we approached solving this problem. My name's DJ Spry. I'm Senior Director of uh, Product Management at Appstra. It's a pleasure to be here. I think this is my fourth time here. I don't know how I keep getting invited back, so I guess that's a good sign. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be hype man and introduction man for Appstra Freeform. Um, all right, so what I'm going to introduce you is Freeform. Uh, what I'm going to go through is set up some of the things, add some context uh, to some of the capabilities that Monsor talked about and prime you for uh, Alessandro's presentation where he's going to pick up some of the concepts and show a live demo. So I'm going to move this pretty quickly because uh, um, I'm going to make sure that we have more than enough time for the demo. Um, so when Monsor was talking about our pro you know, the things that make uh, Appstra special and that our customers love about Appstra, when we take a step back, we developed a lot of intellectual property and a lot of unique capabilities in this space. Um, and some of those that you'll see here, and I'm going to continue to call through these throughout the presentation, is you know we we focus heavily on simplicity, um, and there's certain features that that are unique to us, so such as network designer being able to do uh, the single source of truth and closed loop validation. Uh, we have a network context or a graph database that's part of uh, Appstra, so it allows us to, to derive rich context and relationships inside the network that it helps you um, for troubleshooting and configuration. Monsoor mentioned Time Voyager, it's essentially data center rollback. So you can go broken to unbroken in a single click. Um, and as we said, these are capabilities as that, that customers you know, loved and valued. Um, so I was with a customer, it was probably, I guess, eight months ago now, and they're de they've deployed, um, they have multiple data centers in Europe, they're a managed service provider, uh, and they have a, a three-stage clow running in one country, and they have a five-stage clow running in another country, and they're using Astra for all their data centers. And, and they sit down, they say, look, we really appreciate everything you guys do, and we love Astra, but we're, you know, there's a few networks which we were deploying. They were deploying out some, um, some edge uh, sites and some, um, the topology was hub and spoke. And they said, so it doesn't fit neatly into reference design, but I would love to be able to use Appstra in these topologies, you know, like what can you do for us? And there was a few other conversations with customers that were along the same, um, same vein. And so we had to take a step back and I'm gonna start trying to tie in some context to the demos, the prime and, the, and maybe explaining my shirt a bit, but we had this gap, we had this mind the gap where a subset of our users had, a, a, you know, exceptions where they wanted to leverage the power of Appstra, but they, you know, didn't fit neatly into the topology. So if I were, you know, like how many people in the room or on the line say, yes, I have a data center and I love Clo, but like how many have another data center or deployment that is not a Clo? Like is a Hubbard spoke or, you know, a ring or something like that. I mean, I, I would bet that everyone raises their hand. And so we, you know, we had to acknowledge that fact. And it could be either because of top topology or it could be protocols as an example, you know, it could be ISI as a risk. So we wanted to provide this capability for Appster that is, you know, simplicity and incredibly powerful and intent driven, um, but for a wider uh, range of uh, options for more people. And so we wanted to address freeformers about being completely custom. And 
still leveraging the benefits that make Appstra incredibly valuable to you and useful and, and help your day two operations. So the first one is this network designer. So what, you know, what do I mean by network designer? So this is an Aston Martin, a uh, fantastic customer of Juniper, makes amazing cars that I cannot afford, but I still uh, will hop on there. And like, I love this Aston Martin and I'm gonna make this DB9 and it, I'm gonna make it gray and then I'll build it out and then I'll dream. And then I'm like, you know what? I saw some car drive by and it was yellow. And I'm like, this thing looks money yellow. So I'll make it yellow and play around. The point here is this network designer is I don't actually have to buy an Aston Martin in order to build out and design my Aston Martin in the way that I would want to get comfortable with it. And so what that has to do with Appster is that since the very beginning, we've had this concept of a network designer where unlike competitive, many competitive products where you have to buy a network or build a network or discover a network, in order to automate the network. We start with the data model first and we can, we can build and design an, a, a complete digital twin, that's the marketing buzzword these days, of a network that you want to automate and you can iterate through that. You can say, I, you know, I want uh, you know, a, a Juniper QFX 5100, but then I wanna see, well, what would it look like if I would change this configuration to a 10K or to a Cisco or a Arista, but I don't actually have to buy that gear and it works incredibly well for like migrations or to work out what this end state is that you want to look at without having to buy all this kit. So we kept that same concept and we've introduced uh, this capability where you have this canvas, this interactive canvas where you can draw the network of your dreams and you can you know, change things with colors and drag things around, you can see here. Um, you can add metadata and assign metadata to the devices or to the links and you, this metadata will be used in the configuration and in the analytics capability you'll see in the demo. But one of the things I'll call out here, um, and they get back to it in a second, it's on a loop, is that one of the other value propositions of, of Appster is that we have these devices and we understand a lot of the capabilities and we code um, logic about the devices. So if I were to you know, ask somebody, you know, how many breakouts to some switch that you have support you know, off the top of your head? You don't know, but in order to start operating that, you need to know, you know, what are the port capabilities, what are the breakouts, what are the ASIC types? So we kept that capability as part of this so that when you begin to automate a lot of this yak shaving of to understand what this device capabilities are and what the breakouts are is handled for you. So this is uh, the first one. So you can build your, you know, in state, you know, Aston Martin network and iterate on it without actually having to have gear. And when the stuff shows up, you know, you can deploy it and, uh, and, and then you're off to the races. So another area of simplicity, when we start talking about control and we really want to give more, uh, more control to you, the user. So essentially at this point in time, you are the network reference design, right? So for the people that are CLI, you know, I saw many of the folks raise your hand, is that we can, we wanted to make this very simple, but yet powerful. So one example is you can have direct configuration. So you can do a show run on a device or copy and paste, and you can push that. The next step we did is like Jinja 2 templating. I'm sure many of the people in the room are familiar with Jinja 2 templating. So we um, support Jinja 2 templating. So here you can see host name and we also made it nesting and composable so that you can do things like uh, uh, control capabilities where common elements of your configuration and, and collapse them down. But this is, you know, some people would look at this and say, oh, okay, well that's, that, that's great, but you know, I've, I've seen some of this stuff before and change of templating and et cetera. So it's maybe not so unique, but it's new unique to Appstra, new capability of Appstra. But we wanted to take that one step further and introduce how can we do this with additional simplicity and tie this to the network context in our graph database. So this is where we start sprinkling in a bit more magic. So what does that mean, single source of truth and graph database? Like what does that mean for me in automation? And so here's an example of uh, a device. So this is a node in our graph database. This node is switch three, and this switch three has an aggregated ethernet interface called AE1. And there's another node in the graph that has, this is AE1 and it's composed of these. And you can see there's MTU information, there's host name information, ID, serial known version. All of this is information that is learned and encoded in part of Appstra and dynamically updated in, uh, as either part of knowledge that we know or that you enrich. So if you added a tag, it gets added to this property. And this exists for you to pull from and draw from when you're automating or you're troubleshooting the network. So if I were to compare and contrast this is that all of this information would have to be managed by you and updated by you in some sort of way. So people love YAML or other sorts of, you know, various networks of 
truth or different ways to manage this data. The point here is this data is managed and tracked and the relationship of this data to other relationships. And you'll see that in the, in the demo. So this is an incredibly powerful concept that we're bringing over even when you're in complete charge of the configuration. This is one of my favorite things is that we've developed a completely new user interface for this. So uh, again, trying to pull the audience, uh, when you're building automation or you're trying to do Jinja templating and you're, et cetera, there's a whole stack of suite of things, like a lot of yak shaving that you have to go to, you know, to get to this stage. So, you know, like me, uh, I'm not a say it, I'll raise my hand. I have completely bricked and totally hosed my laptop by screwing up my Python environment, trying to set up my laptop to, you know, to, to get the right Python version. So we wanted to make building these things and accessing the graph database incredibly simple. So what we built here is a user interface where you can build a configuration, you can access different devices, and you can see the rendered configuration. And you can interact with the graph database in real time. So what you'll see here is that, you know, I can show the device context, which should generate the configuration. So here is Jinja. And inside Jinja, we're doing autocomplete colorization, tags, error correcting, checking of the Jinja directly in the product. And you can switch context to see what the configuration would look like for different devices. But then here on the end is access to the graph database. So you can say, if I want to look at host name or keyword, what does that, what is available for me in context? And Alessandro is going to show much more about this. I'm just teasing some of this up. The benefit of this is, is that for anyone who's sort of, you know, dabbled in automation, this looks very similar to an IDE. So now you have a built-in IDE generating configuration, getting real-time feedback from the graph database. So incredibly simple. So all of these uh, at the end of the day, and there's more, I want to say, jump directly to the demo here for Alessandro. But we've taken Abstra and the things that make Abstra special and powerful for you and, and operators when you're building things, making it more simply to generate configuration that meets whatever it is, however esoteric, you know, if you want to run Rift, run Rift. And, you know, we can help, you know, um, build that configuration. So now we've had, you know, the best of what I would say are turnkey, highly reliable, interoperable, intent driven, where push button, get banana is like I call it. You don't have to be concerned. You know, you don't even interface with the configuration. You just say, I want thing from A to B and oh, poof. So now you can have completely arbitrary customized designs. And what that allows you to do in one interface is that I can have for my customers that I met with in, uh, in Europe, I can say, look, you can run your three-stage network. And you can have this highly intent-driven turnkey solution on a three-stage network. And you can run a really large five-stage CLO or a five-stage IP fabric. Or you can go smaller and run a collapse fabric, one or two nodes, so you can move down. And these, at the same time, in the same experience in the same interface, and you see here that we're managing all of these, we're, we're purely in the management plane, the automation plane, meaning by which we can manage you know, remote data centers and et cetera through the same interface. But now I can have a... a, a, a a data center of type freeform that looks whatever it is that you want to look like and however it is that you want to build it with whatever commands. And you are leveraging your knowledge and years of architectural skills and, and et cetera, however the business wants on the same product. This looks like the kind of thing that would work really well for greenfield deployment. Uh, if you have, like most of us, existing networks, however, um, how does this get applied there? Have you, have you done many existing networks, migrated them from their current state into this system or? So we, we've done that. It's a great question. So the question is, uh, how does this apply to Brownfield? I'll just, yeah. you know, call it, you know, a, a dog a dog or whatever it is. Is that uh, we've, we've done those with the data center product, um, the, the sort of thing, but you do have to sort of adapt to Montsource point, you know, to our opinionated design. The outcome is maybe the same, but how you get there is different. In context of to freeform, if you have an existing network, that proposition is much easier because really all you have to do is imagine you had a hundred devices and they're all configured. You could do a show run on a hundred devices and get their configuration, draw them on the topology and do a one-to-one -one map of here's the configuration that's running. And I'm going to apply this configuration on this device in the network. And they're under the control of Abstra. Now there's a few steps to use there, but you don't have to, whatever, topology or whatever configuration that's running in that network and you want automation on top of it and you want time voyager and analytics and things that Alessandro is going to show you this is a far easier of a step to get there so you don't have to completely change your architecture to get that same outcome
but you still, so if you're in that brownfield environment, you say, you know, do a show run and map it. Are, am I looking at the configuration and I'm mapping it and saying, oh, here's my, my text running config, or are you mapping it, ingesting that? No, you can take it directly off. There are some, that I, um, I'll save that for a future session. <laughs> so uh, you can do this just if you have, uh, you know, a, hundred show runs, you can take the hundred show runs and, and make a hundred, these are called config templates, uh, and just map them one-to-one. -one. There are some techniques through some automation that will be able to ascertain what is running on those devices and then, then help that process along for you. So there is some automation, like not automation when we're thinking of pushing config, but there's some intelligence in there that can help you map that but a human operator is still going to have to scrub and make sure everything came across correct. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, what you don't want to do, you, to, given an idea, so this is Piccadilly Circus. You're going to see more of this, Alessandro, explain it. You could have the show run from Piccadilly Circus, but we still need someone to tell us that you're not assigning Piccadilly Circus to Notting Hill as a configuration. But whatever you have running right now, we can take bit for bit, word for word, character for character. You don't have to venture down this templating this can be a second step. You can make an evolution to this, uh, and Alessandro's going to show that. Any other questions? Anyone online? With, with that templating, are you, uh, I mean, things get complicated fast with the templating because you have stuff with variables. You have, like, like you mentioned, the host name. You have things that are truly oh. common across everything for a particular vendor, but then you have things that are common only upon certain strains of the each each vendor, um, you know, and, and having gone through this in a, you know, in a manual process, identifying those configlets and where they're tagging and then which configlets to gather up for a particular device is reasonably complex. Yeah, sir. We talked about this. We actually had a slide. Is that you can have a very small network with reasonably sophisticated Jinja templating, or as you're going to see, you can have a very elaborate network with very simplistic, I would say, easy to follow Jinja templating. So it's really up to the skill set and the level of how you utilize the tech. But what I will say is because I've been through this myself too, and I, you know, I was an SE and an operator, is that when um, having the ability to model all of this it, beforehand to see where that limit is and to model and say, I have a hundred devices in my network and I want to say, I want to use a host name as a variable. So let's say that I want to, I want to just start off with host name as my variables or banners, message of the day, very common elements that you want to cross. I can start with there and see what it would look like for me to interact with the graph database and what this end state looks like um, and iterate on that. I can save it. I can start again. I can roll it back and I can get an idea of what this end state configuration looks like in a very safe manner because nothing you do here is getting actually pushed to devices until you de determine that you want to push it. Um, but I, you know, no doubt uh, we have an example uh, I'm teasing something ahead. So we have an example that's available in our GitHub page, which we'll tease a little bit later, of a very sophisticated, very small network, a very sophisticated Jinja to show the art of the possible. But it could get very hairy very quickly, but it doesn't have to.